So in the previous lesson, we got you set up uh, writing a bit of JavaScript in either your web browser console or in the run.js console if you're on a Mac. And we literally printed the message, hello world, back to ourselves in the console. And we use this console.log statement. So every instruction that you give JavaScript uh, within your code is referred to as a statement. And it's usually a single action. And in our previous case, it was to log out hello world to the console. So there are a few things that you should be aware of when using the console. So it doesn't matter if it's in the web browser as well. Uh, you can use this console.log statement to print out text and numbers to the screen um, but because we're in a REPL which stands for read evaluate print and loop type of environment we can actually just type in things directly without using console.log so for example if I wanted to type in hello world again you'll see that it's just repeated back to me in the console and we can do the same thing with numbers as well so you can see adding two and two together gives us four and we can do other mathematical operations too, by the way. So for example, we say two and then an asterisk and two, that's two multiplied by two. And then if we wanted to divide, we use a forward slash, so two divided by two. And of course, if we wanted to subtract, we just use a minus sign to give us two minus two. Okay, so the thing to take away here is that when you're using the console, whether it's in the browser or with run.js, you don't actually need to use the console.log to get some output onto the screen. If you're writing code that's going to be within an application or within a website and you, for some reason, want to log something out to the console, maybe there's some kind of error occurred or something, then you would need to use console.log, but let's not worry about that too much for now. Of course, we can use console.log for our numbers as well, so we could put our sums inside there too. And you'll notice I've used a semicolon at the end of that line, and that's to tell JavaScript that we've finished our statement. So we've told it we've finished what we're doing. Uh, so just to give you an example, if we were to put another console.log here, we could actually put those both on one line. JavaScript will let you do that. It'll let you put more than one statement on a particular line. But if we forgot to uh, put that semicolon in there, for example, You'll see we get an error because JavaScript can't understand where the first console.log ends and the second one begins. So a couple of good practices. First of all, when you write your statements, make sure they finish uh, with a semicolon at the end. And you might as well put each statement onto a separate line. Uh, there's no reason to squish everything together. The aim is to write the source code of your program that you're writing as readable as possible. So you'll notice when I want to do some arithmetic or print out some numbers to the console, I don't need to wrap those in single quotes. So when I'm working with text, like the hello world message above, it needs to be wrapped in quotation marks. And we've referred to this text as a string, and you can see it's got spaces in there, so the quotation marks just help JavaScript to identify where the complete string is held. And obviously the numbers don't have spaces in, so we can safely not use quotation marks around those. We'll actually look at data types in JavaScript in a couple of lessons time. But first let's talk about what variables are and the difference between the three ways of declaring them.